Now, tougher new rules on spousal visas come into force today. Citizens here will need to earn at least £29,000 a year to bring their husbands or wives into the UK. That's up from 18600 The Home Secretary says that the changes will protect British workers, but some critics argue they'll actually punish families. Well, joining me right now to discuss this is former Home Office advisor Claire Pearsall. Uh, good morning to you, Claire. Nice to see you on the Zoom, although we normally have you here in the studio. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, lovely to see you. Thanks, Thanks for having so. me. Well, I mean, these, uh, these, this is quite a big change. This is, look, this is basically like how much do you yourself, if you're living here as a British citizen, have to earn before you're allowed to bring your spouse in? But also there are lots of rules in terms of what like the spouse will have to earn. But basically you need to be able to support your other half. Otherwise there'll be, a, a, you know, claiming benefits or a drain on society. And these figures are extraordinary from today. Britain's having to earn at least 29 grand a year up from 18 and a half grand to sponsor a loved one to come and live in the UK. But the wage threshold is going to go up later this year to £34,500 and then again to £38,700 in early uh, 2025. So certainly by later this year, it's going to be, you have to earn average wage. So anyone on a, you know, below the average wage, you basically can't bring your husband or your wife to come and live here. Is that about protecting British workers, protecting the, the, the welfare state, or is it just keeping families apart? Well, I think that we needed to have a look at the thresholds. Uh, that 18,600 hadn't changed since uh, approximately about 2012, I think that was originally bought in. And we all know that the cost of living, the cost of housing and providing services has increased. So I think it was only right to look at the increase. And 29,000 seems to hit the right note. I think looking at increasing it up to 34,500 and even further, will be a stretch too far for the majority of families and then you start to look at what that does to the fabric of families who want to live and settle in the united kingdom they're paying their own way they're working sometimes in slightly lower paid jobs so i think it's a fine balancing act but i don't think it's wrong to have a look at what it takes mm to uh, be able to afford to live in the United Kingdom with your family, just as the rest yeah. of us have to. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I say, I'm always in two minds on this because the general policy sounds very sensible, but then there will be families who, are, you know, someone goes abroad to work, they fall or travel, they fall in love with someone, but because they earn, you know, under 30 grand or over 30 grand, depends whether they can bring their partner back to live in this country. It seems to me that there shouldn't be a sort of a, a basically a price on falling in love with somebody. So that does feel wrong. And especially at a time when we are handing out hundreds of thousands of visas to people to just come to this country who earn way less than this to come and work as carers, for instance. So we're allowing people to come in. The vast majority of those 745,000 visas uh, handed out by the government a, a year or so ago were to the dependents of people working here. So we quite happily allow people who are foreign citizens to come here who are, don't earn decent money and yet we're saying if you fall in love with a Brit, you, you're, that Brit has to earn a certain amount of money, otherwise you can't be together. It doesn't feel right to me. No, and I, and I totally agree with you. It feels like a, a sort of love tax, if you put it that way. If you travelled over to Spain and you met the, uh, the partner of your dreams and you wanted to settle in the United Kingdom, you were both working and you didn't meet that 29 or 34 and a half thousand then pounds Pablo threshold, can't come then here. that really does matter. <laughs> That really does uh, pull the family to pieces. So I do think that perhaps we go for the low hanging fruit, the people that are easier to yeah. charge. And these are, remember, are people that want to come here legally. Yeah. They are filing all the correct paperwork. They have all their visas in place. And more often than not, we'll have opportunities for employment in the United Kingdom. So I think we should welcome people like that. There have to be stringent categories. I agree. But I think that if we put it up to nearly 40,000, it's going to be out of the reach for the majority of people it is. with pretty normal paying jobs. Yeah, and that, that's and that's the thing, isn't it? And it just, it does, as you say, attack tax on, on love effectively. Um, but we know why this was originally brought in. This was brought in because we had a load of people coming here from for all intents and purposes, third world countries like Pakistan, and then they were basically shipping in wives. That's what was happening on a mass scale. I remember writing about this, the Sunday Express, way back when. And they were basically you know, shipping in wives, um, barely educated, couldn't speak English, couldn't, couldn't write English, couldn't even write in, 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 in their local language. Um, and, and they're bringing them in. Women often they didn't even know from the local village and, and being, being brought to this country. No one thought that was a good idea. And so they, you know, they bring in some of these rules and that stops that. And then we have, you know, language tests and the things as well. But it seems to me that, you know, this is kind of 
basically going a bit too far. And, and in, I think there will be numerous individual cases where most right-thinking Brits, taxpaying Brits, would go, that doesn't seem right. I don't see why he or she can't bring the other half in. But, but how, do you, how do you make a policy that doesn't apply to everybody? Well, that's the difficulty. I think the government needs to really understand what it wants its immigration system to look like. And it never really settles on what that is. And all it does is go after those uh, legal minded people who have applied through the correct process. It's not really tackling the matter that most people care about, which is the illegal immigration. Yeah. Legal migration, people are paying huge amounts in visa fees, they are paying huge amounts in the immigration health surcharge so that they can use public services. It costs an awful lot of money. And I think that we will lose some incredibly talented people. I know of uh, Portuguese veterinary surgeons, I know of uh, Polish physiotherapists who wouldn't be able to come here otherwise because of their partner's salary threshold. Yeah. So I think that we are pretty much cutting our nose to spite our face okay. and not actually dealing with the problems which are the main issue within the United Kingdom, which is that of illegal immigration. Yeah. As always, it's look over here, don't look there. Thank you so much, Claire Pearsall. I used to work as a special advisor in uh, the Home Office.